Today we're talking about things that you can learn from the pros round two. Last year I didn't have the chance to watch the pro league all too much and I realized that made me miss out on a lot of strategies, a lot of little tricks that you can utilize in your own games. And my goal with this series is to allow you to have this information without having to watch the entire pro league. So there's some information in here that may be known to you already if you are watching the pro league. There's some stuff that you maybe missed as well. And if you're not watching the Pro League, then hopefully there will be a lot of new information here for you. This information, again, is things that we can learn from the pros, so I'm not going to go into detail about specific strategies and starts that don't really work for you in your own casual or ranked games, but rather focus on the things that you can apply to your game in one way or another. So we're primarily focusing on unexpected picks or picks that are returning to the Pro League after a long time that you can play in your games too, as well as some surrounding strategies and especially items as well. I did a video like this at the beginning of the season, which you can check out here. And since then, a lot of things have changed. So we're going to do an updated version now, while mostly being focused on the most recent weeks, because obviously those are the things that are most applicable now after various changes. Let's begin with various tidbits of information before we talk about specific picks and their builds. The first one that I want to mention is that we're really seeing a lot of variety in the Pro League right now in terms of god picks in every role except ADC. If you're playing ADC and you want to win, it seems like the main choices here are Heimdall and Jingwei, with some other choices like Hachiman occasionally being played but not having nearly as much of a role. And while this trend is obviously more dominant in the Pro League, this is something that translates to lower levels of play as well, unfortunately. What we see on ability-based hunters now is that they regularly choose Heartseeker over Kin Size and go for full ability builds, whereas in the past we often saw pen builds but then implementing Kin Size for some health damage. Heartseeker has really replaced that here, which is very interesting. Talaria Boots has also seen a general rise in popularity. We see many solo laners going for Talaria Boots or Traveler Shoes instead of going for Teleport again. And we're also seeing Talaria in the jungle more and more and more. And I will blame this one on Scream, who's been doing that all season, basically, even more than Sino, actually. If this is something that we'll still see after the upcoming Talaria nerfs, and if you should still run that, is another question. I think it'll drop a lot in popularity after that. Magi's Blessing is generally regaining popularity as a primary defense item. It was never gone, but it was less picked for a while over alternative choices. At the moment, it's out in full force everywhere on almost every role. Shifter Shield is regaining popularity with junglers as well after being pushed out by Bloodforge almost entirely for a while. Mystical Mail is regaining some popularity in solo. I thought this was going to happen sooner, but now it's actually happening. It's being picked up again with the effect, in my opinion, being relatively strong for the price at the moment. We see multiple shakeups to starts, which we already saw kind of at the start of the season, but now things have gone further. What we see very frequently is the jungler starting at speed buff with the mid laner and the solo laner starting on blue buff right away, and the jungler then rotating straight over to blue buff and clearing that together with the solo laner so that they guarantee the shared XP and then the solo laner gets to solo just a little bit later. And I would recommend applying that in your casual rankings as well because I think it's a lot more effective in multiple regards. The jungler will then use Hand of the Gods on the Harpies afterwards on his own so that he has the quickest rotation to middle lane. But we see Hand of the Guards being used beyond that. We see it even more on supports now. It's very, very popular on supports at the moment and often used on the first purple buff immediately at the start of the game. They then sacrifice any kind of mana sustain and just go for health pots. And we even see it picked on the ADC sometimes, which I gotta say I found a bit questionable. I saw Kuzenbo support with Hog and then Jingwei as an AC with Hog when Kuzenbo alone with a good bounce can halfway clear the purple camp. So. I think it's a bit over the top at points. What's even more interesting though is Hand of the Gods on mid laners though. I saw this on Merlin, who used his AoE ability on the speed buff to help the jungler clear that, and then moved straight to red buff and cleared that in his second stance, presumably with Hand of the Gods, so that he would have red buff at the start of the game and could not get invaded. This is something you can do in your own games as well, because you don't really need the help of anyone else for it. At the same time, it's not necessarily equally easy with each mage because you kind of need two abilities at the start to pull it off well, I think. We're seeing an old combination of picks making a return as well, and that's Aphrodite plus Kali. It's not a free win anymore, especially now that Aphrodite's got some nerfs though. 
Staff of Murden has gained a lot of popularity, which is very interesting in my opinion, as this was once a very frowned upon gimmicky item, but now with its changes it's really established itself as a useful item on those mages that can make good use of it, like for example Discordia. Celestial Legion Helm is kind of replacing Jade Emperor's Helm in solo builds, that's specifically for Yaman Gundam, but also in general it's being picked up a little bit more, so that's a choice you can consider again. And Warriors are picked more and more in jungle. We get into some specific picks here later, but they have gained a lot of popularity as junglers and are working quite decently. When talking about solo picks later in this video, I want you to keep in mind that solo is seeing a very drastic change with the change to Warriors Blessing next patch and apparently even more changes in the mid-season patch. So a lot of what you'll hear about Sol here, or the picks that you'll see, may not necessarily hold up and a lot will change there soon. And with that, we're moving from the miscellaneous part to the specific picks. This time they're sorted by games, so it's not necessarily an order that you can logically follow here. We're just gonna go through all these different picks that I thought were interesting in one way or another. The first one is Nike, here played by Scream, and the very interesting part is that she is being played in that's where she is very popular at the moment. Often you'll see her being played with burst heavy builds, but sometimes you also see builds like this that are a bit more bruiser focused. So she's definitely established herself as a current jungler and it's working for her. The next pick is Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga has been picked a few times as well. In this case, it's by Hurrywind in middle lane. And with Baba Yaga, I think it's just interesting that she actually made her way into the Pro League quite a few times now, even though many people thought that she was not strong at this point yet. And what you can also see here is that the build is very unusual. We see Book of Thoth and Warlock Staff in the build here, then rounding it off with a Soul Reaver and Obsidian Shard. So you have to keep in mind that this is a build that wouldn't really work well for other mages. And it's something that really just focuses on late game. You see there's no flat pen early here, they even CDR boots along with that. So this is entirely built towards late game and it worked out. This is not the only playstyle that you can do with her, and I know it's not the playstyle that most people would prefer, because it makes her early game really weak. But at the end of the day, if you can play the long game, then it can be very effective. The third pick is another mid laner, and that is Hera. I thought Hera was just interesting, because she has been popping up here and there, while she was generally not considered good for quite a while beforehand. In this case, she's played by Big Man Tinks in mid lane, and actually this game didn't turn out to be a win, but that doesn't mean that she's inherently a bad pick. She was picked off enough to really justify her as a current choice. And we just spoke about Nike, but I also wanted to show you that Nike is not only playing in the jungle. Here we have Jakora playing her in solo as well. And here we also see the Talaria boots and now teleport strat, the relics in case you can't see that are blink and beats. So really she is played in different playstyles and both seem to work, uh, which is interesting after many people didn't seem to like her rework that much initially. Then we see Big Man Tings on Agni in the mid lane here. He has also been picked multiple times after really being out of the picture for a long time. Obviously always the poster boy for the most balanced guard for a long time, but not so much lately and now we finally see him coming back a little bit. So I think that is a very good thing. We're also seeing Amaterasu in solo on multiple occasions, here played by Benji. And what I thought was interesting here is that we're actually seeing her being built with Frostbound Hammer and with Shogun's Kusari plus Toxic Blade, which is generally also more popular now, and Ninja Tabe. So a lot of attack speed in this build to very easily apply her passive effect along with the Frostbound Hammer. She still gets sufficient tankiness, not as much as in other builds, but a very aggressive build that allows her to give more damage to her team in combination with the Void Shield. Another friendly face that has popped back into solo is Osiris, and he's been played in many games. Here, this is the game where Jaco was playing him in solo. This one was actually not that successful, but that doesn't really speak for him as a whole. He's generally pretty strong at the moment, and we are seeing him rise up more now already, and I'm expecting him to see even more play with the Warrior's Blessing change. On the note of old faces making a return, this god has to be mentioned, and that is Thanatos. Here played by Sino in jungle, but he's been picked up multiple times in jungle in general, and he has been working out in some games, though not necessarily always. 
Sam Fosaka, for example, played him and won hard, but in this game it didn't turn out that well. So it is the same as it always been with Thanatos being snowball reliant to some degree, but at the same time he seems to synergize much better with current items and everything that allows his playstyle to work better overall. It's in synergistic in a team rather than just being a pub stomp guard. Heimdall has been picked everywhere, I don't really need to mention it. But what I want to show you here is when Barracuda played him, he actually picked up Atalanta's bow and they won that game. I think this is very interesting. You see, it's still a relatively ability based build overall with Transcendence, with Heartseeker, and with RC in there as well. But the Atalanta's bow gives the build high sticking power at the same time, something that I find very interesting because for a long time it was more frowned upon by hunters. And I think it's a generally interesting item overall, we're seeing it more in other places as well, we'll, we'll get to that. The Pele pick in Jungle by Lospera here should also not really surprise anyone, also a very common pick. What I found interesting was that he started with Ninja Tabai and the Crusher. Typically we see Pele builds being heavily focused towards the ability based side, but by combining these two items and her three, you actually get very high sticking power for a lot of basic attacks early in the game. And I think that's a very interesting choice. I'm actually going to try that out myself because I think it allows for a different playstyle that may actually be more effective for Pele in early stages. Next up, we have Osiris again. Why would we have Osiris twice? Because now he's played in jungle. Sino has actually put Osiris into the jungle. It didn't work out in this particular game, but it's definitely a very interesting choice in my opinion. The problem that I see with Osiris is that he is a character that needs to stay ahead, that needs to heavily snowball from early stages, which he can do very well, but if you get shut down on the way there, then it's kind of hard to come back from that. But overall, I think it's very interesting to actually see Osiris in the jungle finally. It's one of those characters that I personally used to run a lot in jungle, not just because it was fun for the memes, but because I actually felt like he had pretty good potential there, and in the current meta, it's a lot more favorable as well. Another guard that is returning, I already mentioned this in combination with Aphrodite, is Kali. Here we see her played by Cherio. I just wanted to throw this in to show what the builds look like. And what you notice here is that we have Atalanta's bow and his katana on her <laughs> combination with Odysseus bow, so we're really hitting caps here. Uh, but this is very interesting because the build starts off very differently. It starts off more ability focused with Crusher and with Warrior Tabai, and then a late game transitions to as much AA as possible. Mulan, after all her changes, is actually successfully played now. Here we see her played by Nika in solo lane. Not really much to say about the build here, but it is worth pointing out that she is worth picking now. Did any of the carry players already fall asleep because there's barely anything in here for you? Well, time to wake up now, because this one is interesting, this one is spicy. Vote played the Morrigan in carry. Now, I will say that I don't necessarily think that Morrigan carry is something that you can effectively pull off in casuals or in ranked all that much, unless you're very skilled with her. But I wanted to throw it in here, because I thought it was very interesting to see, and at least it's something for ADC players to try out if you just want to see how it feels. And on the topic of how things feel, one thing that feels as bad as usual is a Willish. I just wanted to put this in here because she was picked once by Sam for Soccer and it went exactly how you would expect things to go. The attempt here was to do a combo between Bacchus and a Willish and it didn't really work out. At least a cleaner looking post game graphic was available this time, so that's something I guess. And speaking of Bacchus, in the same game Polar Bear Mike went for the Bacchus pick I did want to show you this one for one specific reason though, because of the build. That build was very 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 likely built, because at that point that game was already lost, they were getting stomped super hard. But I thought this is actually a fun thing to try out in casuals, because it's actually a pretty interesting combination that if you build Bacchus and Staff of Murden, you have access to multiple belly flops after each other, and that could actually be hilarious and actually be a pretty decent setup. You probably wouldn't want to build this early in a build if you're going for a normal support build though. Now while my list of interesting picks is actually a lot longer, I don't want to overstretch everyone's attention span and I also don't have time to edit more than this today, so I will have to make a cut here. There may be a third part of this depending on the feedback, depending on how much interest there is in it, so if you hit the like button to show me that you want a part 3, then it could be happening very very soon already. Other than that, if you're new to the channel, feel free to the sub button and maybe the bell if you want to stay updated for more Smite content. Thank you guys very much for watching, I'll see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.